So first of all, uh, let me thank the organizers for letting me speak here. I'm uh, very happy. And uh, also I thank the audience for getting up early. So and those maybe who, who come. So uh, the talk is not really in uh, the line of, of the other talks in this conference, I have to admit. It is a bit more uh, algebraic, so uh, I will talk about Drinfeld associators and a conjecture that was uh, posed by uh, Pavel Etimov about these associators. And uh, this formality morphisms part is mostly to make uh, contact with the conference. You can, you can derive certain spin-offs or corollaries of this, which um, relate to formality morphisms. But uh, on, on the positive side, I, I try to be relatively explicit in, in what I do, I hope. It's not such a difficult thing I will talk about. So first let me give the definition of a, of a Drinfeld associator and I will give you the standard textbook definition. So the textbook definition goes as follows. So a Drinfeld associator, uh, can, you, can you read this size of text in the back? Damia, can you read that? Yeah. Okay, very good. Drinfeld associator is a, a group-like element of the associative algebra of formal non-commutative power series in two formal variables x and y so I mean elements of this thing are for example 1 plus xy plus yx something like that and my, my ground field here is always of characteristic zero. And this, uh, this, this uh, thing has to satisf satisfy certain, um, certain uh, conditions. So let's, let's call this Greenfeld associator maybe phi, like element phi of this ring here. First condition is, is relatively simple. So when you take phi and reverse the order of the, of the arguments, then you get the same thing back up to a minus one over here, so you get just the inverse. So, ah, okay. Yes, so there's a co-product simply by setting yeah, making x and y primitive, right? So, and uh, here, uh, what you should uh, should should do is you should always consider like completed tensor products because these series are are infinite, so you have infinitely many terms. So, group-like means with respect to yeah, yeah, group-like means that if you take the co-product, this is equal to phi tensor phi. And and um, yeah, th that's why it makes sense to talk about the inverse here. So the second e equation, uh, this is called the hexagon equation, is already a little bit more complicated. So I have to read that to get the terms correct. So uh, I'll just put it on the board. I can I can make the board sure. So uh, at the moment I, I just want to let it 
stand that it is. So I will not give you an explanation why this uh, comes about. It's just some algebraic equation. I will. So this is called the hexagon. And then there is a there is the third equation, which is even more uh, complicated to write down. Namely, to even write down the third equation, I will have to make another definition for you. So. To define are the uh, so-called Grinfeld Kono Lie algebras, and they are given by the following presentation. So you have generators. Yeah, because I mean, they're, they're usually called a, a T N. They have uh, uh, generators Tij, so and here Tij is considered the same as Tji uh, for i and j between uh, 1 and n. And there are the following relations. <coughs> Namely, uh, first of all, if you have one Tij, and you have some other TKL such that I and J are distinct from K and L, then these things commute. So for for distinct elements in ZZ, then the second relation says that if you have Tij and um, try to commute this with T K T I K plus T K J. This is also zero if I J and K are distinct. Distinct. So this is a, the definition. If you want a more conceptual definition, what this actually is. Then uh, what you can take is you have the you have the um, um, pure break group in, in n strands. It has a certain presentation. You can you can compute its Malsev completion and take the Lie algebra of this. This will give you a certain Lie algebra which is filtered and the associated graded is is this guy. So this is essentially one version of the pure break group, if you want uh, um, the Lie algebra of the pure break group. And now, given this this definition, I can write down the the last equation finally, and I also have to read that because it's a little bit complicated. And uh, I, I make these symbols here. I will tell you in a moment what I mean. So this is equal to uh, some other strange symbols. Like this, and, and here, when I when I write a phi with this with this superscript, I mean the following expression. So I give you two examples, and then it should be clear. So there are, there are always three groups of numbers, right? So, for example, let's take the first phi one two three four. Then, what we do is we take one number from the first group and one number for the second group, and always get an element p. Ij, where i is the first number, j is the second number. So here you have only one choice. You can take one and two. This is the t one two. Then, for what you put here, you take one number from the last group and one number from from the middle group. So here there are two choices: two and three, and two and four. So what we put is just the sum: t two three plus t two four. Uh, I give you one more example, maybe this one here. This is equal to phi t12 plus t13 t24 plus t34. Now, uh, these are pretty ugly uh, equations, right? Unfortunately, I do not know any uh, way to 
uh, writes them, which is considerably simpler, or would not uh, need some some uh, heavy uh, definitions to make before. So uh, I have to say um, honestly that well, so when I was a student, and the speaker would start with writing a definition as ugly as that and then tell, uh, tell the audience that he wants to study this I would probably have fallen asleep immediately and uh, did something else so um, I think some words of motivation are in order there's a more, more senior members of the audience may excuse if I give some motivation so yeah, these look very ugly, right? But but still, I would say these are one of the more important sets of equations in, in mathematics, and they have been extensively studied by uh, many brilliant people, including several Fields medalists. And uh, the reason is that for uh, many problems in the field, when you when you try to solve the problem, you end up at some point or another with this set of equations, or with something equivalent. So, what you can what you can um, find is that these equations occur in some form or another. Again, uh, for example, in a problem such as deformation quantization. So I don't give a complete list, I just give uh, some examples. So you uh, also find, uh, you, you also have to solve this equation when you want to do quantization of, of the bi-algebras in, in quantum groups. So, so that's not quantum groups, but, but what I mean here is, is quantization of the bi-algebra. Um, related to this, you, you might want to consider these things when you when you uh, do not theory. Um, although there is there is an application to to Lie theory. So when you want to solve this K okay, conjecture, which was done by Anton Alexeyev and, and Eckhard Meinrenken, then one way to obtain such a solution is to solve these equations. And yeah, I, I think I cannot I cannot give you like an overarching reason that would apply one to one to each of these cases and unify them. However, I can give you some some idea of of why this, these equations are so prominent. And the reason is essentially that solutions to these equations parameterize uh, formality morphisms of, of what's called the little disks operat. So, um, the disk operat is essentially an operat you, you build out of configurations of, of disks in a little disks and in one uh, larger disk. I will not discuss it in, in too, too uh, much detail, but if you, it's a topological space, if you consider the, the chains of these topological spaces, You get some uh, operat in, in vector spaces. You can compute its cohomology, and the cohomology of this guy is the Gerstenhaber operat. And it turns out that, that these two things are uh, quasi-isomorphic. So that, that means you can write some zigzag of operat quasi-isomorphisms between them. And um, it turns out that, that uh, these formality morphisms are parameterized up to homotopy by by these things. By, by Greenfield Associates. And so this is important because 
is actually a model for what's called the E2 opera, or rather the E2 opera without the zero array operation. And these kinds of opera are uh, abundant in homological algebra, so you will hit them very often. And whenever you want to relate something that's, that's governed by, by something obtained from this side and something obtained from this side vaguely, then at some point you have to, you have to pay. You have to, to go from this side to this side, you have to pay in terms of solving these equations in some form or another. And uh, even worse, these equations here are uh, rather are rather difficult to solve. So, you see, homological algebra gives you a very a big toolbox in, in, in solving similar problems, but uh, up, up to now there is no known algebraic way to solve these equations. So the, the only ways that you, you know to solve these equations uh, use in some form or another transcendental method. So at some point you have to compute integrals concretely. So homological algebra will also only like simplify the problem on this side, simplify the problem on this side, but we will not be able to go from the other side, from the other side to here, from this side to the other side. And that's also why, why many of, of these problems here are, are difficult or non-trivial. And often, I mean, things that, that stand on this side, and when people talk about them, they have some adjective quantum attached to them, and here maybe classical or semi-classical. But these are just words for us, so no, no meaning attached. So, um, am I doing this? Okay. And, and there are very, very important uh, conjectures attached to this. So, for example, the naive way to solve these equations, or this how I would start, for example, is that here it looks like you can you can solve them iteratively, right? Let's say you have a solution up to some order in these variables. Let's say up to 10 x y you have a solution, then find a solution uh, with 11 x y, and uh, that you can you can try to do. And then uh, at the 11th stage you will hit uh, some obstructions. And next thing you, you try to do is to show that these obstructions went. Many people have tried, in, in particular uh, Konsevich, Greenfeld and Tamarkin, and nobody knows how to show that the obstructions vanish. However, when you, when you compute, let's say in a computer, you, show, you, you see that there are no obstructions in as far as we can see. So this is one... Uh, one very difficult open conjecture in the field that actually there are no obstructions to solving this equation. Anyway, so after talking about what we do not know about these equations, let me let me talk a bit about what we actually know. So what do we know? Um, so the, uh, the important thing here is that the set of Drinfeld associators is a torsor for a certain pro-unipotent uh, group. And uh, this group is called the Grotendieck Teich Müller group. And the definition is obtained from this definition by just striking out these exponential factors here. If you just leave them away and replace Greenfeld associator by grotenik teich müller group elements, then you get the correct definition. So, and, and this group acts 
freely and transitively on the set of Greenfield associators. So we know that, that the set of Greenfield associators is the same as that group up to uh, that we forget the unit. Right? So it is actually sufficient to, to study this, this group. And And GRT is a, a pro unipotent group, so objective limit of, of um, unipotent groups, which in particular means that, that you can take, for elements here, you can take exponentials. Uh, sorry, you, you can take, for example, uh, powers of elements, arbitrary powers. And it makes sense to talk about the, the Lie algebra of this, and, and this is what is called the Grotenik Teichmüller Lie algebra, so with the same in lowercase letters as usual. And by linearizing these relations, you can, you can find the defining relations for GRT. So, GRT element will be an element in the free Lie algebra, of, so instead of group like in the free Lie algebra, generated by x and y, satisfying the linearized form of these equations. It is, it is, yeah, that's the next point. So up to now we don't know that there are any elements, so it could be all the zeros that we're talking about, the empty z, right? So, but, but then, one thing that's important is that GRT is graded, and, and then we know that there exist elements, sigma 3, sigma 5, sigma 7, and so on, in uh, GRT, which are which are non-zero. So, and, and the, the subscript here is a degree. So, for example, this is degree five, this is degree seven, and so on. And then there is actually a, a conjecture of what this GRT is. So, conjecture. This is typically associated to um, these names. Lean, Greenfeld, and Ihara, and it says that that GRT is actually equal to I mean, conjecture. It's not known. The free Lie algebra generated by these elements up to a degree completion. Uh, this is a very hard conjecture. Has been open for a long time, and and the recent very remarkable result of, of Francis Brown has shown one half of this conjecture. So Francis Brown has shown that, that it actually contains the free Lie algebra, so there are no relations between these elements here. This is very remarkable, but the other half is still open, so it's not not clear whether this is actually the full thing or whether there are in, in high degrees many more many more guys. Of course it has been checked to some degree with the computer, but of course computers cannot go forever. So then, um, well, how do we know that? So, I mean, the first first points I think you can you can convince yourself more or less with algebraic manipulations. But for example, how do we know that there are these elements in, in GRT? And uh, this knowledge actually comes uh, because uh, we have an explicit way to construct some isolated solutions of this. This uh, system of equations. So, there are explicit methods to construct three solutions. You just, you can write down the answer if you want. And uh, these are called the knishnik samolochikov associator, actually due to uh, Grinfeld. Uh, 
uh, then um, so there is another associator which is obtained from this one by a cheap trick and the cheap trick is that if you have an associator you can take the same thing by just replacing x and y by, by minus its value and that will give you another associator, I call that the schlichting samolonikov bar associator and then there is a third construction a little bit different which is uh, called the Alexeyev torsion associator so this was um, written down by Alexeyev and torsion um, yeah, then you can ask, well, maybe we could get a fourth one, right, by doing the same cheap trick on, on phi AT, but, but that's not possible. This is even, so you will get back the same thing. So, now that we have these three explicit solutions, we can, we can uh, prove that statement here. And that goes as follows. Well, say so have by missing Samolochikov, you by missing Samolochikov bar, and because this is a torsor under this GRT group, you have some element G that takes you from one to the other, right? A unique element. Then, because this group GRT is actually pro unipotent, you can take the logarithm of this G. So you can write G is the exponential of some psi and psi is in, in, in your t. And then because this is graded, you can take the graded pieces of this psi. Taking the graded pieces, you will just get these elements here. And um, then, of course, when you when you know that you have all these elements, then what you can do is you can take by missing some logical and make many more associators by taking the exponential of some linear combination of these guys and and hitting hitting it uh, on this guy. So they have some constants, and you, you act with with this guy here, and you get many more associators than the one form of this this Deline Greenfeld Ihara conjecture is actually that like this you get all the associators, all the solutions. So, but well, now you can say, oh, wait a minute. So we have up to now we we kind of used this guy and this guy, but we have a third guy, right? So why not make the same trick going from here to here? That's certainly a, a plausible thing to do, right? So, well, when, when you do that, you have by ignitioning some logic of, have some element, let's call it G tilde, takes you to this Alexeyev Poisson associator, and then G tilde is exponential of some psi tilde, and then the graded pieces, let's call them sigma to J plus 1 tilde. And a priori, there's no reason why these things should have anything to do with these sigmas above, right? Of course, this lean greenfeld Yahara conjecture uh, says uh, that actually these should be at least contained in the free d algebra, but, uh, well, <laughs> we, we do not know, okay? And, and here, uh, this is, and now I can, can post Pavletinov's conjecture. So Pavletinov's conjecture is that, uh, like this, you do not obtain anything new. So in the weak form, it is very plausible so let's say weak form 
weak form just says that the sigma 2j plus 1 are all in the free Lie algebra, in the, the Lie algebra generated by uh, sigma 3, sigma 5, and so on. So that you, you, you won't obtain anything new. But then, Ravel Lettinghoff also had a bit, a bit uh, stronger form of this conjecture. I mean, here, well, all experts would agree to this, that this is true, probably, but, or believe that this is true, but there's, there's another uh, statement. Namely, when you, when you go from here to here, you don't just have an element, but you have an explicit path, right? You can, you can say, I, I take by ignition some logical, and then I act with e to the psi t, where t runs between 0 and 1. Then you have an explicit path that takes you from here to here. And the, the strong form of Pavletting of conjecture says that, that this a t guy will be exactly in the middle of this path. Yes? Is there, uh, why don't you the uh, yeah, I, I don't put the even because they, they don't occur. Uh, but you don't know as a, a priori. You have to check in, in completely what, the, what are the form of these things, and then you will see that there are no even guys. That's why I don't put them. But it's a very good question. Uh, if you, let's say we, we know just what we know, or you don't know the explicit construction, sure. So there might be the even guys as well. So, um, yeah, so, so the strong form strong form is that phi at is g to the one half times phi ignisnik homological. And now I can, can talk about our result. So I want to keep these equations. And uh, this is a very uh, recent joint work in progress with Carlo Rossi from Bonn. So, uh, our, our result is that we give the construction of a family of, of Greenfield associators that link Gnissnik Samologikov phi a t and this anti Gnissnik Samologikov guy. I cannot, zero, I cannot write, give a construction, so, so there. Is family of Greenfeld associators, let's call them uh, phi t such that uh, first phi zero is is um, using some logic of associator phi one half the Alexei Torosian associator and phi one is this anti using some logic of associator. Secondly, this um, this family is actually the flow of a of a family of of GLT elements. So I, I write it like this: GT phi t is equal to x t times phi t, so where this x t are GLT elements. Uh, however. 
in contrast to what this strong form of, of Atinos conjecture says, these xt are not constant. They have a, they have a certain uh, scaling behavior. So, concretely, xt can be written uh, as follows. So we have some big, big one to infinity um, of uh, some some scaling factor which is t times 1 minus t to the j times some elements that I call sigma uh, j plus 1 uh, prime so I mean these things might as well be taken as uh, contextual generators of, of uh, GRT right? I mean the sigma 3 sigma 5 um, are only well defined if you want up to addition of, of commutators. You can, and I mean, if you have a free Lie algebra generated by some elements and you add some commutators to any of the elements, then they will uh, still uh, uh, generate the Lie algebra, right? So it's kind of unimportant. And they are possibly, these are possibly different than the, than the um, sigma 2j plus 1 I had before, and using this equation actually you can work out if you want some precise relation. Uh, so, uh, yeah, that will be that will be one later point. There is an so so uh, yes and no. So so uh, I don't have an explicit formula for these things as an element of of GRT in this definition. However, um, what I can offer in this direction is you, you can. You, you can sh show that this actually is the image of a certain graph cohomology class and for this graph cohomology class I have an explicit integral expression so I can write down integrals, I cannot solve the integrals however, I cannot compute it um, now that is, I mean, lack of explicit formulas is already a problem for the sigma 3, sigma 5 uh, I mean in principle uh, these guys here are explicitly known, so, so every single term here has an explicit expression in terms of m multiple uh, theta values that was given by Lei and Murakami. So, I mean, you have an explicit action, everything is completely explicit, so it's just a combinatorial exercise, if you want, to work out the precise form of this sigma 3, sigma 5 and so on, but there's no, uh, no known formula in any uh, um, in, in any sense that, that would be uh, reasonable, I mean, except just repeating the definition. And that, uh, yeah, I will talk about this explicit form a little bit later. Um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's how this is done. So I have 20 minutes left. Um, I have to say that the, the construction is a little bit technical. There are a lot of uh, uh, technical details. You have to show convergence of certain things. and It's a bit um, bad, so I will, will sweep these issues under the rug mostly. But what I want to motivate is where this factor comes from. So, um, how to obtain this prefactor? Yeah. Good idea. Yeah, let me let me step back one moment and explain how we actually obtain these associators. Yeah, how do we obtain, for example, this guy? And th 
the, the constructions known, or at least the constructions known to me, um, mostly define these associators as the holonomy of a certain connection on space of configurations of three points. So, what you can consider is the Knistic Samolochikov connection, which has the following form. So, the, the connection one form is up to some prefactor, this conventional, given by x over z plus y over uh, 1 uh, minus z, where we are on the configuration space of three points, but we fix two at zero and one, so it will be C uh, without uh, zero and, and one. And, and that is, is just the position of the remaining point here. So this is a zero, is a one, and then Z can be somewhere. And then missing some logic of associator. is the uh, uh, holonomy of this connection on the path where you move Z from, from 0 to 1. Let me make this drawing again. We move that there. Now, there's uh, some problem because if you actually compute that, you see that due to these divergent factors, this actually blows up. So this would be infinity if that would be true. However, um, there is a way to uh, regularize. There are actually uh, many ways to uh, regularize. The most naive way is, well, w we might cut off epsilon from this interval on both sides, then uh, everything is defined, but if you go, let epsilon go to zero, it, it will still uh, blow up. However, if you compute the integrals, then everything, or coefficients of all terms, will be some polynomials in logarithm, from, uh, logarithm of epsilon. And the most naive way to regularize is you just formally set this logarithm of epsilon to zero. There are a little bit more, more better ways to explain this, but it's kind of the most naive version, or most simplest version. So the second thing um, that I should explain is how to obtain this Alexia Torsion associator, phi at. And here uh, there are actually uh, two ways to uh, do this uh, construction. So history here is that uh, what Alexia and Torsion wrote down was, a, was an associator which takes values in uh, some different uh, Lie algebra than we actually uh, want to have, and then was the result of uh, Pavel Chevera and myself that, that uh, the thing they defined is in fact a Greenfeld associator. And so we have two different approaches to this. Let me uh, at least quickly sketch both of them. So. First, maybe a little bit more conceptual approach. So we more or less can take similar ideas to here. So what we want to do is we want to construct some flat connection on configuration spaces. And this can be put in a good algebraic way as follows. So first, the configuration spaces of points in, in C or in R2 actually can be made into an, an operat by suitable compactification. And, and this is usually called uh, Falten McPherson Operat FM, at least by uh, Konsevich, also right name would be Falten McPherson Axelrod Singer or something. 
and yeah, FM2 of n is just the space of configurations of n points in, in R2 suitably compactified. I will not go into details here. And then this, this construction here goes into two steps. First, one may put a flat um, Pn valued connection on Fm to n, so for each n. And furthermore, one may check that, that these connections are are compatible with the with the operate structure. So it's a good way to formulate this compatibility as, as follows. So when you, I mean, you have these Lie algebras, you can check it's actually an operat of Lie algebras. What we take is there is a graded dual, let's call that P star uh, graded dual. You can take the Chevalier complexes of those and you get a cooperat in uh, a commutative algebra, DG commutative algebra. And then um, uh, a flat connection with, with which is compatible with the operat structure is a cooperat map from here into the differential forms of these spaces F and two. So in particular, when you when you look at the generator here and see how it maps, this will exactly give you what is the connection in the usual sense. And then the second thing is, is exactly the same as we did before. The whole norm of this connection in the configuration space of three points when you go between 0 and 1. Now here I'm uh, cheating a tiny little bit. For this to work you need actually to replace your space of differential forms by a little bit um, technically a little bit different style it's called a PA forms if you want to read about this. So there's a paper of, of uh, a hard Turchin, uh, uh, Lombrecht and Ulich and uh, these are not smooth forms on the boundary however they have the features that they can be integrated so, so this is well defined without any regularization and from the compatibility with the operat structure you actually get that, that um, uh, this guy here satisfies these equations so if you want these equations are some encoding of, of the flatness and compatibility with the operat structure Okay. Then here I haven't. Uh, um, given you one important detail and then we how to actually obtain these flat connections. So this was was uh, more or less done for us by Maxim Konsevich. So um, what Maxim Konsevich showed he defined some some operat which he called graphs and he gave an explicit map from here into uh, sorry some some cooperate uh, graphs into these forms and uh, then what you can actually uh, check is that that this graph operat is Chevalier complex of some L infinity co-algebra, let's call it ICG and uh, this guy is related to I, I, I just sketch it because I want to do some other things to our um, um, star key like this, so you have some arrows with some other guy in the middle 
and here we are a little bit lucky that this map actually factors through this guy, and then you can just take this composition and get the, get the result. So that's a very quick sketch of how to, how to obtain this. So the, the important point is the lucky fact that is factors. And yeah, you, you may uh, work out what this is. And that was actually the approach that Alexander and Paul showed it before we did this work. And you can derive an explicit formula. So what, what they did is say, Find certain here and plus S square uh, M, or actually say to define them, to power that defines them before. Um, that is not be very precise. So, so they call that special derivation. The free here and plus on N generated, and here, well, what, does, what does special mean? Special means that if you have XJ and you want to send it under some derivation, then the thing you send it to the commutator of XJ with something. And secondly, if you consider this sum, this is actually sent to zero under the equation. <laughs> Under the derivation. And derivations like this we call uh, special. Uh, this, I mean, Grinfeld calls this the algebra the Ihara here. And here you can, you can check that the things there are represented by certain graphs. So I, I will not be very precise in computing that in five minutes. There are uh, certain certain graphs you can you can write down that have n many vertices of one sort that's called an external I write them as this open open circle and an arbitrary number of unnumbered vertices which are all equivalent uh, and which um, which are not in the label so for example, this would be the typical graph. Uh, I, yeah, I apologize for not being very precise here. Just that I don't have enough time. Um, and then, <coughs> then you can give an explicit formula. You can write some connection that is this form. <coughs> so implicitly you have the sum over all the graphs of this form. So for each such graph you can associate a certain form on the gamma and multiply by this graph. And then how do you how do you find this form on the gamma? Or let's maybe I uh, can't really, uh, say omega gamma kill it. Omega gamma tilde will be a certain fiber integral over some form omega gamma. Now this form omega gamma gives some space of differential forms of a space of um, configuration of n plus k points, where n is the number of downstairs points and k is the number of these unlabeled points. And here you have forgetfulness to have to an M and you can integrate over the fiber of that M. And that is what more they means. That's the explicit construction. You can check it it's flat and you can check that this is exactly what you get using the previous construction. Now, so how do, how do we get these prefects there? For, for this 
this, I have to tell you one more thing. So if you want to associate with this form, then you have to take the product over over all the edges in, in our graph, and for each edge we associate a certain form with e of the argument that i minus j. Another way to write that is 1 over 4 pi i times e log that i minus j minus e log that i minus j bar. And then you may, you may uh, generalize this procedure So this is the here, you make a whole family of connections. And this family is obtained by, by just rescaling this and this part appropriately. So you could put a factor one minus t here and the factor t here. And then doing the same construction gives you a family of connections. Of course it sounds very innocent, but it, it, as a matter of fact, you, you make the same set of singularities and there are a lot of technical difficulties under the group. But Let's suppose we sleep that all under the rock and let's say it um, Then in particular from this construction taking the, the holonomy as before, we obtain some family of associates by T. Now you can you can what we want to what you want to consider is how the family changes its time. Now, if you take the derivative of, of one of those guys, the derivative will produce for you logarithm of the distance between the lines and the wave. But now, this is, this is a function, right? So here we have this like D of, of some function. So that means that if you take the derivative of omega down to P, this will be actually D of, let's say, alpha P. But now, if you look again, you see the space of configurations are, without the compactification, these are, are uh, complex manifolds. So when you when these k points move over, over the space of configurations, and you want to get something non-zero by integrating out the fiber, you have, an equal, have to have an equal number of p-sets and, and p-set bars. And then if you just, just consider only those terms that have an equal number of dz and dz bars, you will see that well every every dz contributes one factor one minus p, every dz bar contributes one factor of p. So at the end this form alpha gamma p here alpha gamma p is the form p times one minus t to the number of of these like vertices times something else that doesn't depend. And from this equation you get that, that this family of connections is actually related by a family of gauge transformations that is defined by this guy. You have this scale behavior and then if you, you revert it out, the family of gauge transformations actually is a family of GP actions and these factors you have here carry over all the so the, the number of, of um, these vertices here is uh, exactly the, the uh, degree of your your um, GFP element at the end. So and that's how you how you get these uh, scaling factors. Um, I, I think. My uh, time is uh, over, so thanks a lot for, for listening.